Amen. We're at the sixth word. And it's taken from John 19, verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And that word will be brought to us today uh, by uh, Reverend Emmanuel Akinsillary. Would you please receive him now? Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank you, Bishop and Pastor Chris. Amen, amen. I thirst. Good word, seven words of the cross. My word is, it is finished. Look at your neighbor and say, it is finished. That word was altered by the greatest man that ever lived. And those three words are the greatest words that have been uttered that have shook that have shook the foundation of hell that have shook heaven that have shook earth what does it mean to say it is finished and 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 you know Paul Peter is writing to the church he says this he say grace and peace be multiplied to you according to the knowledge of God we have and, and one of the knowledge that we as a people of God have to keep on feasting on is this word. It is finished. The work of salvation, the work of redemption is finished. Now, when you read Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible talks about the sacrifices of bulls, of goats and bulls all for year after year. And it covered the sins. But this time around when Jesus hangs on the cross and says, it is finished. Jesus is saying that our sins will no longer just be covered. But our sins will be taken away. We are cleansed because of his blood. And it is finished. Now. It is finished, it's, it, it, it finished in the past, it is finished in the present, it is finished in the future. Not only that, but it is irreversible. You know, there are some things that happen that can be reversed. There are some things that happen that can be replaced. But when Jesus says it is finished... He's saying to us as a people, the work of redemption, our sin debt has been paid in full. There's nothing you and I can do to pay for our sins. Our sins debt is paid in full. And, and, and what that means for us as a people, we got to break it down a little bit. It gives us access. To the Father. Now, remember what's happening. All throughout history, the, the, the people of God had to offer sacrifices year after year. And, 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 and on the day of atonement, the priests will go before, go into the temple one time a year, sacrifice for the sins of him and the people every year. Every year, every year, and it only covered sin. Now, I can imagine Abraham saying to us as a people, you got it good. You got it better. Because what you have, we did not have it as a people. We never had righteousness imputed to us. And, and as a people... What has happened when Jesus said it is finished, our sin debts are paid in full, righteousness have been imputed to us, God made him who know no sin 
that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We stand before God blameless. We stand before God holy. We stand before God without any fault because we're standing on the basis of the finished work of Jesus. And Jesus said, it is finished. And that, that work is irrevocable. There's, there's nobody on earth, in the heaven, under the earth, that can revoke what Jesus has done. There is no principality. There is no power. There's nothing that can stop that work because it is finished. I want to draw your attention to, to, uh, uh, to the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. And there is key. He blot out the handwriting. He blot out the handwriting. The ordinances that was against us as a people. Our sin debt was huge. If I want to use this representation, I'll say it was it's bigger than the ocean. So imagine how vast the ocean is. Our sin debt, bigger than the ocean. And the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, he blot out the handwriting that was against us as a people. He took it out of the way. And the scriptures say he spore principalities and power. When Jesus hung on the cross, he gives us access to the Father. Righteousness was imputed into us. Our sin debt paid for. Well, there's another thing that happened when Jesus said it is finished. The power of Satan has been defeated. Because you see, the hold that the enemy had was because of the consequence of sin. And Jesus paid for it. So Satan, the power of Satan has been defeated. And, and I can use my imagination, you know. The devil is gathered in hell and he, he looks at believers. He goes like this. They don't know. I was in heaven. I saw the glory of the Father. I know what it means to dwell in his presence. So when, when, when the devil looks at believers, he says, my, 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 they got it. They, even devils believe and tremble. It is finished. Hallelujah. Gl Gloria has been clapping for everybody by the way she clapped just now. <laughs> Amen. I like that. It is finished finish. in the past. Yes. It is finished in the present. It is finished in the future. It's finished forever. It's irrevocably finished. It is irreversibly finished. <laughs> Say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Look at your problem right now. And say, listen, it's finished. Come on, say you are irrevocably, irreversibly finished. Jesus is too sweet. And the more you hear of Jesus, the more you fall in love with him. That's why we must preach Jesus.
Don't worry about all of the other stuff. There are people running after this and running after that. Please. The message of the gospel, of the scriptures, of the new covenant is Jesus. So preach him, teach him, preach him, teach him. The message for marriage is Jesus. The message for finances is Jesus. The message for health is Jesus. The message for the anointing. Everything is in Jesus. Oh. Say it is finished. Amen. But just keep in mind, it is finished in him. Without him, nothing is finished. In him, everything is finished.